breaking news this evening in Lamont. NBC 5's Phil Rogers is live with what we know right now. He went missing, but they never said why. This is a story that baffled people across the country for more than a year. How many clues were there? The car was a clue. They had that footage at the gas station. That was a clue. A missing persons mystery with lots of clues and finally some answers and a stunning twist at the end. Your reaction? Shocked. A case that proves once again appearances can be very deceiving. 911, what's the address of your emergency? On the surface, Jake Safolia seemed to have it all. He works for United Airlines. A telegenic top executive at United Airlines. It is just an absolute thrill to welcome you all to our hometown. At age 49, the senior vice president of Worldwide Sales. I have somebody at United checking to see if he's on a flight somewhere. Sefolia was a divorced father of two who lived in Elmhurst, Illinois, an upscale suburb west of Chicago. He often saw his twins, a teenage son and daughter. He missed his night with the kids. Sefolia's childhood began far from Chicago in Baton Rouge, Louisiana a clean-cut kid who graduated from high school in 1988. But in August of 2020, Jake Safolia became the central character in a missing person mystery, which began with a call to 911 from his ex-wife, Christy. Something's just absolutely not right. To say the least, family, friends, and even people who didn't know him seemed stunned and extremely worried. A very likable person, highly respected at the company. Former United employee Alicia Bailey says she never met Sefolia, but started a Facebook page when he disappeared. There's just so many people out there who knew him and who genuinely care about him and want to know if he's okay. Just eight and a half hours after that first call to 911, a break in the case. On Saturday, August 8th, Sefolia's 2019 Range Rover was found here in Lamont, parked at Waterfall Glen Forest Preserve. Forest Preserve police reported no signs of foul play, no signs of suicide. Inside the vehicle, they did not find a note, just his golf clubs and a COVID face mask. Police did also find a lightweight jacket, which tracking dogs used to try to find his scent along the trails. Sefolia had jogged here many times before. He was an avid runner, competing in the Chicago Marathon and running the 2018 Rock and Roll Half Marathon in less than two hours. You would run the trail system here at the preserve, which can be eight to ten miles. Forest Preserve Police Chief David Peterson organized a series of searches. This has been one of our most extensive searches with a lot of resources, uh, volunteers to law enforcement staff, drones to aircraft to thermal imaging, including some water uh, searches. Some clothing turned up in the woods, but it wasn't his. Has anyone checked the place? Yes. Police went to Sefolia's home in Elmhurst, about 15 miles from the preserve, not far from his kids and former wife. He moved here after their divorce in 2016. At the time of his disappearance, Sefolia had his house up for sale. The real estate photos played like a page from a sharper image catalog. A foosball table in the family room, a full-size wine fridge in the dining area, and one of those fancy massage chairs by the TV upstairs. Nothing out of place all signs of success, no hint of the chaos to come. I spent a lot of time in the first several months just getting out and meeting with customers. Divorce records showed an active dating life during their separation, signing up for OkCupid, meeting one girlfriend on Bumble in Chicago, dating another in San Francisco. As an airline executive, he traveled the globe, Hong Kong, London, and Tel Aviv. He stayed at the Ritz in California and dined at the Hula Grill in Honolulu with a tab of $528. But where was he now? And who, if anyone, was he with? Police said Sefolia's iPhones, his trackable devices, were found at the house. And friends and colleagues said the recent messages to the phones had gone unanswered. There has been no sign of life that we know of. David Giuliani is a reporter for The Patch. He retraced Sefolia's steps in the days before he went missing. His son reported that he was drunk on the last day he was seen. That was at his house Thursday evening, August 6th, two days before the call to 911. He's acting very out of character. The question is what triggered a change in behavior during a week that seemed to start on a positive note. On Sunday, seven days before the call, police reports show Sefolia drove with his children to visit his sister in Bloomington, Illinois, a few hours southwest of Chicago, and then he returned. His sister told police Jake seemed to be in good spirits. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. 
On Monday or Tuesday, Sefolia flew to San Francisco, where his girlfriend was celebrating a birthday. She too said nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but she did tell police she'd broken up with Sefolia a few weeks before, and Jake wanted to get back together. She said no. He stayed the night and flew back on Wednesday. Do you think that was enough to cause all of this? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, this is a man who had um, two girlfriends. That other girlfriend told police she exchanged several text messages with Sefolia throughout the day on Thursday. His ex-wife also reported he was watching the kids that day. And then I just found out that he had broken up with his girlfriend this week. A United co-worker said he talked with Sefolia on the phone around noon for work purposes, and Sefolia told him he had broken up with the San Francisco girlfriend, and it was all her fault. Also on Thursday, his realtor told police Sefolia missed a 5.30 meeting to discuss a pending contract on the house he'd had listed for about seven weeks. Why would he miss that meeting? That was the night his son went over for dinner, later telling his mother Sefolia appeared to be extremely drunk. His son was apparently the last person to see Sefolia before he disappeared. Started ghosting people at work, not showing up for meetings. On Friday, Sefolia took time off work, which a co-worker said was highly unusual. He missed a corporate golf event. But remember, his clubs were found in his SUV. And then there was this. Apparently, um, his ex-wife said he, he fantasized about going off the grid, and his girlfriend said he wanted to just go in the mountains. He wanted to leave. On Friday morning, the day of the missed golf outing, the day before the call to 911, police say this surveillance video shows Sefolia filling his tank at a shell station near his home at 9.19 a.m. That was the last purchase on his Chase credit card. He was reportedly wearing khakis, hiking boots, and a baseball cap. A few minutes later at 9.23, his Range Rover was again captured on video, westbound on Butterfield Road heading toward his house. A neighbor said he was pretty sure he then saw Sefolia drive away just before noon. The Chicago area girlfriend said he did not return her messages that day, and his ex-wife said he missed his night with the kids. Soon after midnight, on Saturday morning at 1.33 a.m., a DuPage County Sheriff's deputy reported his Range Rover parked at the Forest Preserve. Then again at 4.07 a.m. But Sefolia had not been reported missing yet, so nothing popped up when they ran the plates. At 11.30 a.m., his ex-wife, now increasingly worried, went to his house to check on him and then made that call to 911. 911, what's the address of your emergency? So why would a man who accomplished so much suddenly disappear? Was Jake Sefolia in trouble? Jake Sefolia was in trouble, according to the Elmhurst Police Department. He was under investigation when he went missing. Now, do I know what it was? No, I have no idea. And that adds another layer to this, no doubt about it. A law enforcement source confirms he was under investigation, but wouldn't say for what. Elmhurst Police declined our request for an interview, saying in writing, Sefolia had not been charged with a crime. The key question for investigators, did Jake Sefolia take off or did he take his life? I think that a change in behavior tells you that either one is possible. Richard Shack is a retired Chicago homicide detective with 30 years on the force. He teaches at National Lewis University. He never worked this case, but agreed to look at the facts we found through our reporting. How hard is it to go off the grid? Depending on who you are and what your personality is, it may not be difficult to go off the grid at all. Even in this day and age with all the surveillance cameras? Well, the thing is, is who's looking at the cameras and where? I mean, here we are in Chicago, and if I went to Boulder, Colorado, who would know me there? If he went off the grid, could he do it alone or would he need help? I think a man of his intelligence could probably do it alone. And you remember that when you have an accomplice in anything, there's someone that knows exactly what you're doing. And if you work hard enough to get off the grid, I don't think you'd want anybody to know what you're doing. But how would he get off the grid? Presumably, police have checked all the flights, buses, and trains, certainly any taxis, Ubers, or Lyfts from the Forest Preserve. It's just a great time to be selling United from so many different standpoints. Not We only did find Sefolia knew how to fly. In fact, his aviation experience went beyond his executive job at United Airlines. He graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in 1996 with a degree in business management. He also earned a private pilot's license, allowing him to fly single-engine airplanes. Still, that was years ago, and we learned his license was not up to date. You certainly can't go and lease a plane without an active license. Then, three weeks after his disappearance, police got an unusual tip. 
which seem to advance the other theory of a possible suicide or maybe even foul play. This time from a clairvoyant who goes by the name Marie St. Louis. Through my messages, I don't make decisions for people. She told police in her vision of Jake, she was drawn to mile marker 4.5, labeled the Splains River Scenic Overlook, and north through the Bluff Savannah up to an old Irish cemetery. She told police she saw Jake on higher ground, not at eye level, near an electric tower in a restricted area with a fence. It turns out that area actually exists in the forest preserve right next to Argonne National Laboratory. Find anything? Unfortunately not. No suicide note in his vehicle. Does that tell you this is not a suicide? No. Many people don't leave suicide notes. Um, in suicide cases, there's often a suicide ritual. Retired Detective Richard Sachs says it's important to look for clues of that ritual, a pattern of getting your life in order. You've got a man that's at home and he's got 35 projects open. And then all of a sudden he goes crazy and starts to finish and finish and finish and finish and finish. Certainly one big project was the sale of his house, but remember he missed the meeting with the realtor to discuss a pending offer. Court records show it was transferred to a trust after his disappearance and eventually sold for $523,000, $37,000 less than he originally paid. I look for unusual activity in his financials either before he was missing or of course after. Elmhurst police did all that. USAA Bank reported no large withdrawals in the 10 days before he went missing. And again, Chase said his credit card was last used buying gas. Aside from the house, his Range Rover was another big asset left behind. It's unclear if it was paid for, but it would list for well over $80,000. Because if someone is planning to leave that car for family, maybe they would clean it up, but they'd also leave the keys to make it easy. We checked. Police told us the keys were not left in the car. He gets gas right before the disappearance and right before his car was found. That would lead me to believe that he wanted the car to be able to be used easily for someone else. A COVID mask was hanging from the turn signal shift, suggesting it was placed there after the vehicle was parked. Perhaps unusual for a man scrambling to get out of town, but maybe not for someone on the verge of a final walk into the woods. Another clue? $120 was found inside his golf bag in the SUV. Why leave cash if you were skipping town? Perhaps most significant, Elmhurst police released new details after our request through the Freedom of Information Act. Their records show they executed a search warrant at Sefolia's house, collecting and packaging evidence at noon, just one day before he disappeared. We shared these new details with retired detective Richard Shack. Whatever they found might have triggered something for him to take off. Could trigger a suicide as well? Possibly. A United Airlines pilot friend said Sefolia had been under immense stress, taking a 50% pay cut and in charge of laying off a large number of employees during COVID. He was getting therapy, but his Chicago girlfriend said whatever happened to him wasn't planned. Police checked on life insurance and found a MetLife policy for $770,000. Most life insurance policies have disclaimers for suicide that last a year or two. It doesn't negate the insurance, it just means that you can't go buy an insurance policy on Monday and then take care of yourself on Friday and get a bunch of money. But mostly you have to be declared legally dead to collect insurance money. And again, that could take seven years. Human remains have been found near a youth campground at Waterfall Glen Forest Preserve. More than a year after Jake Sefolia went missing, on Friday, October 22nd, 2021, Workers were clearing brush in a secluded area, not near the Irish Cemetery the psychic had mentioned, but off the trail about 600 yards from where Sefolia's Range Rover was parked. They noticed something hanging from an uprooted tree, a human skeleton held by two belts fastened together and around the neck, a mostly empty bottle of rum nearby. The individual was very Still intact, largely, but everything was very decomposed. Did the dental records identify the body? Yes, they did. They were Jake Sefolia's remains. The search was over, but the mystery remained. Then, nearly two months later, after our request for the entire Sefolia file, Elmer's police finally released the one clue they've been withholding all along. Remember how police said that his phone and trackable devices were found at the house? All true, but it turns out they confiscated his phone, computer, and a zip drive 
during their search warrant one day before he disappeared. Though Jake Safoya's name was redacted, the police say they were investigating the downloading of child pornography, video, and digital photos of female children aged 3 to 11 engaged in various acts of sexual conduct, traced to an IP address at the house. He denied downloading any child pornography and was never charged. From the very beginning, his family and friends declined all our requests for an interview. Back by the tree where Jake Savoya died, police found a backpack, inside the keys to his Range Rover, and a note to his teenage twins, saying he was sorry and embarrassed to take the easy way out. Signed, Love Papa, with the symbol of a heart. The mystery's over for us. There's a tragedy behind this story. Well, there is a tragedy. I mean, it's, it's very sad. When I wrote the story, I couldn't get the family out of my mind. I can't imagine having to deal with something like that. It doesn't get much worse than what he was ultimately uh, being investigated for.